Allbirds sent me a pair of their all wool shoes. I put them on. They were so white and breathable and comfortable. They didn't have any fancy logos on them. They just felt good on my feet and they were nice. They looked good and they felt good. Do you know why? Because the most comfortable shoes in the world are made of all wool. Even Time Magazine said that. And they've got a couple styles. They've got the Wool Runner, which is your go-to lace-up shoe for everywhere you go. It's flexible, supportive, and so light. They take you seamlessly through your entire day, whether you're at work or you're playing at night. And they also have the Wool Lounger. It's breathable, lightweight, slip-on shoe that's perfect whether I'm traveling on a red-eye across the country or going to see a basketball game. The comfort, style, and sustainability do not have to be mutually exclusive. Allbirds is dedicated to making stylish, comfortable footwear that uses premium natural materials designed for life's everyday adventures. Allbirds textile is made from super fine New Zealand merino wool using fibers that are 20% the diameter of a human hair. So unlike the wool you may be used to, Allbirds breathable fabric regulates temperature and moisture without any itch. The holidays are right around the corner. You should consider Allbirds for a gift for someone on your list or, better yet, yourself. They're available in a variety of colors and styles. Pick the perfect pair at Allbirds.com. Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO. Go online to GEICO.com or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, head the dirt. Yeah, I pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. <laughs> Give me your po 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 he is Jalen Rose. What up, though? I'm David Jacoby. And on the cool check-in. And we are Jalen and Jacoby. On Center Radio. stage on the mic. What do we do? Put it on wax. Let's put it on wax right now. And give the people what they want. Seems around this time of year, everybody has to get hyperbolic. Everybody has to compare the Warriors to the great teams of all time. And we have to compare LeBron James to Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and blah, blah, blah. When LeBron was asked about the Michael Jordan comparisons, here is what he said. It's it's just a personal goal of mine. It has nothing to do with passing them in rings, passing them in points, passing them in MVPs. It's just my personal goal to keep me motivated. Do you believe, LeBron James, that it does not matter to him? It definitely matters because he was the person that says he was chasing a ghost. Mm -hmm. And we know that that individual is Michael Jordan. But I'm with him on the rest of the statement because I want to get on my KRS-One for a second. When I hear those comparisons happening about LeBron James and Michael Jordan, I say, I'm so-and-so, I'm this, I'm that. But they all just wick, wick, whack. Mm, Explain. Because LeBron James, the only way he can surpass the excellence and the greatness of Michael Jordan, we're only going to acknowledge one thing. He just said it. Not the points, not the rebounds, not the assists, not the regular season, not the conference championships. We're going to count rings. Mm -hmm. That's what this has become. That's what our media cycle, that's what the fans have now dumbed everything down and say, we only going to say the person is greatest that has the most championships. Here is what Kevin Durant said about winning a ring. Quote, it wouldn't mean that my life was complete, but that two-week high, I want to experience that. But it's not going to complete me at all as far as being a person or what life is all about. At the end of the day, it's going to be another basketball milestone that I reach. If it happens, we'll see. But if I don't do it, I'm not going to ball up in my room and not come out. Is it refreshing to hear Kevin Durant's perspective about championships? It is because there's the score of the game and there's the game of life. And one of my biggest regrets of my career is that I was not able to participate in the championship parade and win a championship. But I'm not going to go in a room and ball myself up in a corner and cry. And so what ends up happening is basketball has to be what you do, not who you are. You know what I can do, however? If I really wanted a ring, I could go on eBay and buy one. (laughs) There are some on eBay, which is telling in its own right about how important the game of life is when compared to the game of basketball. Here's what Klay Thompson had to say about losing last year's finals. Quote, 
Every day, I always thought about it. We were so close last year, a game away. I would be lying to you if I didn't think about it all the time. Jalen, both Clay and KD have lost in the finals. But KD lost a while ago. Is that why they have different perspectives? No, I think it's like that old ABC chant, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. KD wasn't there when they lost in the finals. So he doesn't share that same pain. Now, he did lose in the Western Conference Finals while being up 3-1. And you know how he silenced that? He wouldn't join their squad. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to go run with them. So he exercised that demon from that perspective. And him going to Golden State and saying that it was the best decision, the first thing that I acknowledged was that he's not going to be MVP. They haven't won a championship yet. So he's basing it on, yes, I want to be in the conversation of one of the greatest players of all time. Of course, I want to win a championship. But at the same time, he wasn't a part of that squad to feel what Clay feels. And I understand why Clay feels that way, because no team in the history of the NBA Finals has been leading 3-1 and gone on to lose that series. Do you think he really thinks about it every single day? I do. I really do. Just think about it like this. There's a statistic that says men think about sex 19 times a day and women think about it 10. Okay. You don't think he thinks about the fact that he was in the NBA Finals, his job, his career that pays him multi-millions of dollars. He plays 82 regular season games, nine months of basketball. His father was in the league. He grew up in a household surrounded by NBA greatness that he doesn't think about losing the way they lost to LeBron James. And then LeBron James wore an Ultimate Warrior shirt afterwards. Mm. They celebrated in Vegas. Mm. They made Halloween cookies. They continue to double down. Tyron Lewis making comments. Of course, they're thinking about it every day. But here's the thing. LeBron's going to be there. And a lot of people are talking about what this means for LeBron. Here's what everybody really should be talking about. What this would mean for the Warriors if they come up short. Mm. I like this. Give me more. Because... In the era of super teams, they have four all-stars. They're the only team to ever have two MVPs under 30. Klay Thompson and Draymond Green will be all NBA defense. They are loaded, and they're going to be the favorite. If they lose this year to LeBron James in the NBA Finals, now it's time to do some soul searching. Ooh, I like this. Can I just take it one step further and do a typical media member thing? If they lose to LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers Finals, would Steph Curry consider leaving the Warriors? No. Oh, come Not on. Not going to be able to Come do on, Jalen. Go with me. Come on. No hot takes today. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. OTAs are happening right now in the NFL. They are not mandatory practices, but we all know if you're serious about it, you show up to the voluntary OTAs. Someone who did not show up to the Giants OTA, gentleman by the name of Odell Beckham Jr. When we last checked in on Odell Beckham Jr., he was playing catch with Johnny Menzel instead of playing catch with his teammates and quarterbacks. And then there is this. Page Six is reporting. That he and his friends rented out a bowling alley and he canoodled and cuzzled and was cozy and romantic with none other than Iggy Azalea. Jalen Rose, when you hear this, what do you think? Run. Run first. Mm -hmm. Second, Nick Young took a Pepsi swig. Here's the thing. There are about 1,300 players in the NFL. Okay. And I know Aaron Donald of the Rams, who, by the way, is the best defensive player in the entire game, is holding out for a contract. Mm -hmm. Is Odell Beckham the only player in the league besides Aaron Donald not at organized team activities? I'm sure there are others, but he's certainly the highest profile. So let me get this right. Your team was in the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. You and your wide receiver buddies decided to go to live, kick it on a Sunday night, Wear the same outfits on the boat on a Monday. Yep. Play against the Green Bay Packers on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Show us it wasn't a big deal. On the field, middle of winter, shirts off, taking selfies, because y'all going to show us that 
the party and the weather don't bother you. And then what happened during the game, Mr. Rose? I forgot. The game starts. The New York football giants were dropping passes, in particular Odell Beckham. Mm -hmm. They could have put their team in position to actually win the football game. And you know what happened when the football game ended? The Green Bay Packers played another week and the New York football giants went home. Yep. So now, it's summertime. You get a mega deal from Nike. It's actually more than your NFL contract. So instead of you saying, you know what? I'm an all-pro caliber player. I'm going to show up humble. I'm going to be at OTAs. I'm going to show my teammates. I'm going to show my coaching staff. I'm going to show the league that what happened last year, I'm a new man. I'm going to be better. I'm going to help lead these guys. Yep. Because you know what happens when you're the most talented player. You're in a position to be leader. Mm -hmm. But when you're there on the boat, you can't tell Sterling Shepard not to go. The rookie, he's like, I'm going too. <laughs> yeah, he's just happy to be there. So now what can you say to the guys when you're in the locker room and they don't do what they're supposed to do? They're looking at you like, last year you missed because you was with Chloe. This, this, this year, year you Iggy missed because you was with Iggy. <laughs> <laughs> so I applaud the fact that he's enjoying life. He's a mercurial talent. Mm -hmm. He's going to have the receptions, the yards, and the touchdowns. He may go down and break all of Jerry Rice's receptions records. But the one thing that separates an elite level player like a Jerry Rice from not necessarily even an Odell Beckham, but from other athletes, including myself. What's that? Football was laser focused to him. Mm. It was the most important thing in his life. And so I would like to see if o Odell is able to eventually adopt that because he has the level of talent that can put him in a different stratosphere. And also, the Giants won a championship without him. So Eli looking like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I got two chips and I'm here. I'm old. Brandon Marshall just got signed. He's, He's like, there. I'm here. I came to run with him. We supposed to get some chemistry in these OTAs and he's not even here. So like, again, I always applaud those, as you say, people don't celebrate life as Enjoy much yourself. as they should. Enjoy, Enjoy yourself. yourself. Celebrate. But again, if there can't be these emotional joy rides when you're called upon to be the best player. When things are going well, you're doing that dance and you're twerking. Yep. When things aren't going well, you're hitting the net and you're proposing. Mm -hmm. There have to be some level of respect and leadership that now everybody else can follow. And I remember saying this exact same thing when I saw James Harden in game six. They truly parallel for me uh. for different reasons. So why in the world, if you went to a bowling alley with three friends, would you bowl in your own lane? The whole thing about bowling is the camaraderie. The high fives are the highlight of bowling. What I look forward to more than getting the strike is getting the high fives after the strike. I want some time to relax and sip my own beer. Why would you be off on the side with your own lane? It's strange. It's weird. It's weird. A different level of being introverted in a public setting. But how about this? Let me get this right. So you're going to miss OTAs, but then you're going to be out for public consumption? You can at least be on the low. Yeah. There's so many rich people in Los Angeles that have bowling alleys in their homes. <laughs> Go to one of those. You can have your own lane. <laughs> Another thing is they allegedly rent out, rented out the entire bowling alley, right? Odell Beckham Jr., Iggy Azalea, are you so famous that you need to rent out an entire bowling alley? Like, is that really where you're at right now? Like, if I'm a regular dude and I just want to go bowling on a Wednesday night and the person at the door says, sorry, you can't come in because Iggy Azalea and Odell Beckham have rented out the entire place, I'd be so upset. Nick Young takes a Sam Van Gundy Pepsi swig. <laughs> then we have this from OTAs. Your man, Kelvin Benjamin. He's there. He's working out. But he does look a little bit more like a defensive end than he does a wide receiver. What do you think about fat Kelvin Benjamin? He's on his ice cube. I make dough, but don't call me dough boy. <laughs> he like, I got a guaranteed deal once I show up for this season. Cam Newton is my quarterback. We got McCaffrey in the backfield. We didn't have the kind of year last year coming off the Super Bowl the year prior. He was eating good. Good for him. I, he like, I can get in shape during the season. I'm going to do it on company time. We always clown these guys for being out of shape when literally their job is to stay in shape. Like, that is one of the only requirements of the job is perform physically. However, isn't there something to be said for, look, the season starts in two months. The off season is just that. It's the off season. I use these two months to get in shape. Is there something to that? The game has changed. 
I always applaud the current day. I always applaud the modern day athlete by saying other generations worked out. These guys train. It's about compression. It's about nutrition. It's about doing all of the things you can to be amongst the best. Because you know what? The best in each sport, that's what they're doing. And if you're going to beat them, you're going to compete with them, you have to keep up with them and make those level of sacrifices. So it can't be, I'm going to be in shape for the 17 weeks of football and then let my body go and do whatever and then show back up. And also as an athlete, that's how you get injured. It's not like being a fighter where you go into training, mm. you're going to be there for a few weeks, and then all of a sudden you're dropping weight, you get on the scale, you need to lose a few more pounds, you walk in the back, you put your hand down your throat, you get on your scale, you get the check, and then, then you get in the ring and fight. This is a football player, and he's a wide receiver. He's going to be running, he's going to be cutting, he's going to be required to do so much to put strain and stress on his body. I hope that doesn't now lead to him compensating and then to him getting injured. He is going to be cutting hamburgers before he eats them. <laughs>
But this is kind of questionable. They hire a new director of strength and conditioning at the Lakers, Jalen Rose, a gentleman by the name of Gunnar Peterson. Gunnar Peterson is an L.A. based celebrity trainer who trains, wait for it, the Kardashians. Can Magic Johnson become a victim of the Kardashian curse? Or is Magic Johnson's magic so magical that even he is immune to the Kardashian curse? Nobody's immune to the Kardashian curse. What? Even Magic Johnson? Nobody, nobody, nobody. They turned that into a billion dollar brand. (laughs) May the force be with you. While we're on strength and conditioning, it was uploaded to Instagram a picture of Chris Paul and Jay-Z right after a hard workout. They were at Soul Cycle. Jalen Rose, are you down with the spin class? I've been to Soul Cycle, absolutely yes. Do you like the sort of motivational kind of like mumbo jumbo that comes along with the workout at Soul Cycle? Here's what I don't like. What's that? And I'm pretty sure you can appreciate this comment because you ride a bike frequently. Mm-hmm. Hurts my butt. <laughs> does, does hurt your butt. Hurts your butt. I guess that's what it's supposed to do. Yeah, it hurts my butt. Yeah. You know I love strongly worded emails, right? You know I, I love a nice strongly worded <laughs> email. But this I did not know I shared with Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya took it upon himself to write a strongly worded open letter to boxing fans. Do you know what the whole point of this was, Jalen Rose? What's that? He's saying that he wants the Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather fight not to happen. He's saying it's a sham, it's a travesty, it's not what boxing is, it's not what boxing should be. What do you think of Oscar De La Hoya? Strongly worded letter. Hey, 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 Sounds like hey, he's not hey. getting paid. It sounds like he's not getting paid at all for it. That's what it sounds like to me. Oscar should just focus on his mega fight, Canelo and Triple G, in September. I'm looking let, forward to that as well. Let Floyd get his bread, yeah. mm-hmm. because that's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Let McGregor eat. Now, once again, let me just frame this for everybody. Okay. The excitement surrounding Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor is going to all take place between now through the national anthem. Once the fight starts... <laughs> The excitement ends. Floyd is going to put on a fight exhibition. He might even have what I consider his signature knockout. When you look back at his career, 49 tried, zero have been successful. You really don't have that man four or five times where he just floored somebody. That's true. That we can remember and be like, that's his highlight footage. This is going to be Floyd's highlight footage. I'm going to be there to see my fellow Michigander put Conor McGregor on his backside. I don't care how much it costs, I will be in the building to watch Floyd get his 50th win. Also, I got to say something else. What's that, Mr. Rose? It's funny because I actually was boxing today. I got a bad hand, but say something about medicine. Plating five screws. That's why doctors should be paid more than athletes. Anyway. (laughs) So let me tell you this, for anybody that says Conor McGregor has a puncher's chance, you do know that they wear different gloves in the uh, MMA than they do in boxing, right? Yes. You do know that they're different gloves, and you know the knuckles feel a lot different when you're using MMA gloves than when you're using boxing gloves. I think that's fair. Jalen, you brought up something earlier. You had a number off the top of your head that I was shocked by, and it was fact. There was a study that says men think about sex 19 times a day and women 10 times a day. Question, do you think that's accurate? I think that's, um, that's, that's good analytics. I get there probably around breakfast, you know, like after a cup of coffee. <laughs> I'm, already, I'm already at the over. I'm already at the over when I'm putting sugar in my first cup of coffee of the day. As we do, every time that we have... A short radio show. We make sure to give the people what they want and have an extended version for our podcast listeners. We love our podcast listeners, our everyday podcast listeners. Those are our people. Whether you listen while you're driving to work, whether you listen while you're at work, whether you listen while you work out, whether you don't have a job at all and you just spend your day listening to Jalen Jacoby, we support you no matter what. We always say we give the people what they want. Part of giving the people what they want is listening to the people. So if you call 98580-JALEN or you tweet us at Jalen and Jacoby, we'll take your questions. Let's listen to the first voicemail. Hey, Jalen and Jacoby. Uh, it's Nate from Owensboro. What up, though? Um, Jacoby, why does it seem like the only thing you're a diehard fan of is writing strongly worded emails? I thought you were a diehard fan of everything, but I don't know about this. 
All right, get at me. Thanks. Good point. Great question. It's a great question. It's a great question, Nate. I appreciate you pointing that out. I am a diehard fan of strongly worded emails. I'm a diehard fan of smoothies. I absolutely love smoothies. <laughs> I am a very, very diehard fan of my wife and children and my family. I'm a diehard fan of the game of basketball. I'm a diehard fan of really fancy passes that are unnecessary during pickup basketball. <laughs> there are many things that I enjoy in life, but they just don't have bike to come riding, up so much here. Yeah, I'm a running. diehard fan of my bike. I'm a diehard fan. Really, it's just pickup basketball related. It's really just fancy passes that often end up being turnovers that don't need to be fancy passes that is what i'm truly passionate about thank you so much for the call nate we got this on twitter this is from alex he pointed out this news story of a woman who jumped on the hood of a car when a thief tried to drive away in it soft what? move or boss move jalen rose that's a soft move really yep. really oh i'm going boss move on that why do you say soft move one of the, you can't take a, you can't take a step in the United States of America without being insured. Mm-hmm. The average person probably has four or five insurances. Sure. Health, medical, dental, car insurance, home insurance, renters insurance, leases insurance, property insurance. You get my point. Yes. Your car is insured. Mm. So the individual still in the vehicle. You're still going to be able to recruit. Yeah, it's going to be inconvenient. Whatever they were It'll stolen. be inconvenient for your afternoon, but ultimately, like it's it's not like you have a baby in the back. And you know what I'm not trying to do? Fall off of a moving car and get hit by it or killed. That's a good point. No. I, what I would do is before I jumped on the roof of the car, I would take a good hard look at the person stealing the car, and I'd just kind of evaluate how crazy they are. Because if they're crazy, they could just run over you. But if they're not crazy, it might just work out for you. Thank you so much for the tweet, Alex. Oh, we have another soft move or boss move. This one's from Michael. Soft move or boss move, speeding up to keep a car from getting in your lane. Huh. Soft move. Yep. I hate people like that. Yes. Yep. I was speaking with my wife, who is, a, who is a Los Angeles native and a New Yorker as well. And she, I said, how come no one in Los Angeles uses their turn signals? And she said, you don't use your turn signal when you're switching lanes because when people see that you are attempting to turn into a lane, they will speed up their car from behind you. And I thought that was brilliant. I was like, I could, now I'm a real late turn signal switch. Real late. Don't speed up. Go the way you're going. Don't change what you're doing because of what I'm doing. My vehicle and your vehicle are independent assets. I have a soft move or a boss move for you. And oh, feel no. free to tweet the show about this. Okay. Is it a soft move or a boss move? When you let somebody over in traffic and they don't acknowledge you. Yep. That's a soft move. It, it, how hard is it to throw the hand up like a little wave? Yep. You know, how hard is that? Just to, just throw a little hand up. You don't even have to look. Just throw a little hand up. Thank you. You got to roll down the window and like give me a thumbs up. Like I don't need anything like that. You can just give me like a little nod even. Just, to, just move your chin a little bit. That's all I need. But that doesn't happen to me too much because I don't really let people through. One thing I've learned is people respect the minivan. You know what I mean? Like, people respect the minivan. If I'm at a four-way stop and all four cars get there at the same time, I'm just going. Everybody bows down to the minivan. Everybody bows down to the minivan. They know I've got serious business in the back of that vehicle. Let's listen to another voicemail. What up, though? My name's Richard. I'm a person from the UK. Thanks so much for the podcast. Been listening to you since back in the YouTube days. Shout to Reggie. Shout out. If I could get a double shout out for that. That just literally make my day. Shout out. Shout out what you're doing with JRLA. So much respect for the positive energy you're putting out there. Anyway, I had a quick question. So I'm not calling you on work time, but I am calling you international on my work phone. Boss move or soft move. Keep getting them checks. Keep giving those people what they want. Peace. Well, I'm a cast member of the Disney Corporation. I'm a very loyal and honored and privileged to be a cast member of the Disney Corporation. I would never support someone else using company assets to make non-work calls. I would never, like, take a pen home or do anything like that. I would never be on my company phone and just be looking at social media or cruising the Internet. And while I am at work using work things, I'm 100% working. And that is also 100% a lie. Boss move! Yeah. Boss move right there! Yeah. I remember when my wife was in Paris, I used to sneak off in the corner and make 
f- phone calls to Paris from an ESPN's dime all the time. Feel free to recruit me, John Skipper. Hit me up. I got you. I got you. It's like $150. I got that. No problem. Jalen's going to be like, you got to edit that out. <laughs> Next tweet is from Kyle. Can Jalen still dunk? I'll take this one. I saw Jalen dunk last week. Jalen can dunk. Here's the thing, too. That was the first time I actually played basketball in a year and a half. Get That's up there, lot. dunk it with the left. Get up there, dunk it with the right. In another month, I give you a backwards. Really? Oh, okay. So by and June by 25th. No means, and by no means am I a leaper in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> no, you're extremely so tall. So this is an tall. extreme accomplishment for somebody that's been retired 10 years. Do you think when you had, you know, the kangaroo body, when you're wearing those, those, those big suits, during that period, <laughs> was there a point in which you could not dunk a basketball? There was a point where I wouldn't try to dunk a basketball. Heavy cargo. That's it. That's it. Well done. That's the way you play it. Don't even embarrass yourself. Even when you're alone, don't even let yourself see that. I, I, didn't, even I, look, totally I didn't even look at myself in the mirror for five, four years. I definitely agree. Here we go. Boss move or soft move. I turn the music off at work to play your podcast every day, even though my coworkers don't like sports. Boss move. That's a boss move. If they let you get away with that every single day, then it's a boss move. If it's every day, that's a boss move. And also look at it like this. Now all of a sudden you're playing music. Then they're going to complain about what music you're listening to because mm-hmm. their type might be different than yours. Do you? I, 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 it makes me, Anthony, hit me up and let me know where you work because I'm curious about this working environment because it does matter. You know what I mean? If you're in a barber shop or if you're at Bath and Body Works or if you're in a kitchen of a restaurant or if you're in the corner office just blasting Jalen and Jacoby across the cubicles, which I, I enjoy all of those. I just want to know which one is going down so I can visualize it. Thank you so much, yeah. Anthony. Let's listen to another voicemail. Jalen and Jacoby, what up, though? This Dennis from Peoria. Just calling in. I'm on my way to work, and I was listening to the show. Heard a guy talking about Manu Ginobili coming off the bench and being the best Hall of Famer to come off the bench. If I'm not mistaken, and I'm driving right now, so I can't Google this, but I think John Havlicek came off the bench a lot of his career, um, and he's definitely in the Hall of Fame. My main point, though, my question for you guys, soft move or boss move? If you can't guard a guy, throwing him down when he comes to the lane, is that soft or boss? I love that. Get the people what they want. First and foremost, thank you for the call. Appreciate the love. I'm glad you pointed out Hondo was a longtime substitute. So was Kevin McHale in a lot of instances for the Celtics winning championships. But modern day, Manu Ginobili does stand out to me Mm -hmm. as a championship level six man that had the most impact that will also be a Hall of Famer. Hard fouls, always a boss move. Always a boss move. Another thing, Dennis, yeah. here's the thing. We're not Googling stuff either. You know what I mean? It can't, you listen <laughs> to the show, Dennis. You know that we're not researching. We're not no. fact-checking. We're just popping off. So feel free to join us. Don't apologize. Next, we have this one. It's from USB. USB Skate, they hit us up a lot. Shout out to our – you know what? We got – Reggie – I have a job for us. Let's find these people that emailed it to send us tweets every day and get them some T-shirts. How hard can that be? Hit up USB Skate, Homie Big Crown. They always tweet. Everyday tweeters are better than everyday listeners. Shout out. USB Skate wants to know, will we have an unprecedented number of ha, ha, hold me back moments in the finals? Oh, yeah. Career high. I think so, too. I have my eye on Kevin Durant and LeBron James. They're both very competitive. Competitive. They're very feisty. You know, they, they, you know, they, they like they're going to be going back and forth with each other. They're going to be jawing. I don't think they'll actually have anything physical happen, but I've got my eye on those two jawing for seven games. So one of the signature things that took place in last year's playoffs was that LeBron not only played dominant, but he was emotionally invested, mm. and you saw him trying to intimidate the opponent, whether it's after a block getting up in other the opponent's face. You saw how that transpired with Draymond Green, yep. which led to him ultimately be suspended. You saw Steph Curry uncharacteristically lose his cool, throw his mouthpiece at a fan, also get ejected, two things that had never happened in his career. So, yes, I anticipate a career high of <laughs> hold me back moments in this series. Do you think Steph Curry would have been suspended if that was a regular season game? 
Absolutely, yeah. I think so, too. Because you could tell, because Steph Curry didn't accidentally hit that fan. That fan was the most demonstrative fan in his vision, and he hit him. It was really, really, really accurate toss from Steph. I was at the game. As soon as he did it, I'm like, Steph getting suspended. He's got to get suspended. He attacked a fan with a projectile. Like I sent a tweet and everything. He attacked a fan with a projectile, and we all just pretended like it didn't happen. And I totally understand why. I, I didn't want him to get suspended. Don't throw your saliva at me, dog. <laughs> Don't throw your saliva at me, dog. Childish poetry. Let's get that guy a t-shirt too. He I'm says excited this. about this NBA Finals. Me too, man. I'm so excited about this NBA Finals. I'm gonna say, like, outside of growing up in Massachusetts and watching the Celtics and Lakers Finals, this is the most excited I have been for a Finals. And that's just my personal perspective. This isn't objectively saying it's the greatest Finals ever. I'm just saying, from my point of view, in my heart, this is like, aside from Celtics Lakers, the most excited I've been for an NBA Finals in my life. Next, we have this. This is from Big Crown. Does a long NBA career contribute to receding hairlines? And he has some examples. MJ, Kobe, LeBron, Ray Allen. Do you think the index of receding hairlines in the NBA is increased than outside the NBA? Do you think the percentage of, of male human beings with male pattern baldness is higher in the NBA than outside of the NBA? It's a great question. I don't think so. It's one of those things that... The same analytics and stats that you can put towards NBA players and receding hairlines, I'm pretty sure goes for the rest of the nation. I don't think just because you play basketball is going to contribute to you having a receding hairline. Jalen, I have one final question for you. This one's from me, not from a fan or a voicemail. You have to answer yes or no immediately. Are you prepared? Sure. Do I have a receding hairline? Yes. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening on ESPN Radio, for watching on ESPN2 and ESPN News, and subscribing to the Jalen and Jacoby Podcast. You're far too kind.